the silent majority is stronger than ever before. The US election is drawing ever nearer, which means it is time to start paying attention to one of the most contentious subjects in politics, the polls. The supporters there at Clinton headquarters, some of the people look almost crestfallen. We all remember what happened in 2016 when they suggested Hillary Clinton would win. A four point lead over Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton expanding her lead. Donald Trump himself has a simple explanation for all the polls that show him losing badly to Joe Biden. They were fake polls that were either put out by the uh, corrupt media. Looking back at what actually happened in 2016, it is nowhere near that simple. First of all, it's important to distinguish between polls and forecasts. Four years ago, several publications in the United States used polling data to produce a forecast of the election result ahead of time. These models, almost without exception, declared Clinton the overwhelming favorite. The New York Times gave her a 91% chance, and for much of the campaign, the Princeton Election Consortium had her in the eye-watering 98 to 99% range. When Trump won, these predictions all looked very silly indeed. But polls are merely supposed to be a snapshot in time. So, for example, the fact that Clinton had a double-digit lead over Trump in the polling average back in April of 2016 is not necessarily evidence of the polls being catastrophically wrong. A lot happened between April and November. Because Clinton and Trump were both so incredibly unpopular, more voters than usual waited until the last moment to choose a candidate. And those voters broke overwhelmingly in Trump's favor. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us. As we head towards the 2020 election, there are several reasons for the president to be worried. This campaign will send Donald Trump packing. First and foremost, Joe Biden is not Hillary Clinton. As we mentioned, four years ago, large majorities of voters disliked both Clinton and Trump. That is still the case for Trump now. Many polls show more than 40% of Americans strongly disapprove of his performance. Nobody likes me. It can only be my personality. It is not the case for Biden, whose approval and disapproval ratings are roughly even. Put bluntly, people don't hate Biden nearly as much as they hated Clinton. Among voters who don't particularly like either candidate, Biden has a significant lead. That is a group Trump won in 2016. And significantly, there appear to be far fewer voters waiting to make up their minds this time. In 2016, about 15% of the electorate left its decision until the final week. At the moment, polls show only 4 or 5% of people don't know who they're going to vote for. That huge mass of disgruntled voters who broke so decisively towards Trump at the 11th hour four years ago simply does not seem to exist this time around. Now, we obviously won't know whether the polls really are accurate or not until the election happens. But writing them off as meaningless right off the bat would be a mistake. As things stand, the polls would need to be wrong on a far more egregious scale than last time for Trump to even have a chance of winning.